just a, some basic points about the grieving process, some of which I've kind of made only from the negative perspective, but now I'm just going to make it in a positive, positive state, okay? First of all, <clears throat> the gr grief is normal, natural, and necessary. <clears throat> now, one of the points about it is that, remember, grief is something that there's been a loss that you have been emotionally attached to. So the thing that I had to realize that grief is real, it's normal, just because it's not mindset or a physical hurt or break or issue doesn't mean it's not real and normal. It's an emotional one. And when a heart breaks, it doesn't always break smoothly. It breaks in, jagged, in a jagged way. And really viewing grief, it, it is a normal, natural, and it's necessary. It's necessary. Like I said, every human on the planet, regardless of their culture or personality, experiences grief. Even the rough, tough Rambo type. <laughs> They will experience grief. It's how they express it that may vary. And it's, it, but it's, it's going to be necessary even for them in some way. All right, another thing about grief that I've already pointed out is that grief is a process, not an event. It's a process, not an event. Excuse me. We've already covered that pretty well, so let's keep going. Another one is that, I've, and I've mentioned this before too, grief has no normal path or time frame. Now we're going to be talking about that a little bit later. There are some common attributes of grief, common things that tend to show up when people grieve. But to say that every person who grieves has to go through all of these steps or this whole procedure the same is a misnomer because every person this is a key thing to write down every person grieves differently and that's the challenge of uh, in the whole grieving process and that's a challenge of my personality my personality wants to make a list make it complete it's accurate and that's now you understand it it grief isn't like that it has so many aspects that there's no normal way. There's just some tendencies that people tend to, to go through. And the last one, of course, is the whole timing thing. Now, we're going to be talking about timing a little bit later, um, but some people have a time frame. The culture in North America and much of Europe has there's always seems to be a time factor in there some of you've heard it's a one-year period of time uh, uh, some cultures uh, like the Jewish culture we'll talk about that later it was 40 days you mourn for 40 days and then you went on with it and you know, there's a time factor involved um, well the culture may allow for or imply a time factor but to impose a rigid time factor on every individual is really you're going to have trouble making that stick. <clears throat> Sometimes I, you know, I will talk later about the difference between men and women. Sometimes men tend to work through it uh, a little bit sooner than others. And there's a lot of variables, and we'll deal with that. But th there is no normal path that everybody has to go through, uh, or they haven't mourned properly. <clears throat> All right, grief is an emotional stress. It's not mental. As I was working on the book and coming up with a list of things to say or not to say to the griever, this one here came into play as one, a, a kind of a key one. That if you want to help say something, something to someone that is grieving, beware of trying to change their thinking or come up with some logic that's going to talk them out of how they feel. Because there is a dist distance between here and here and the difference between the two. And a griever is hurting here. His thinking may affect that, but that's really not what went haywire. It was his, it's the emotions that's struggling. And if you want to help that griever, which I assume you're, you, you, you want to do, if you want to help that griever, you, you want to lean towards helping them in some way 
with their, how their emotions are hurting. And sometimes the best way is simply to listen, not logic. Better to listen and not logic. Because grief is an emotional issue, not a whacked up thinking process. Another misnomer, that, that the thing about grieving that you need to understand is that grief is a physical condition. <clears throat> I had an interesting conversation. I was actually interviewed on the internet on a, on a world radio program out of Singapore. And it was open conversation and there was questions coming in from all over Southeast Asia. And a lady from Thailand called in, actually typed in to the moderator to ask me a question. They says, my dad is, had lost my mom and it's been a year and his health is failing. How can I help him? And my response was, your dad doesn't understand that the grieving process is physical. He thinks it's just you know, the willpower. You can help him understand that the grieving process is affecting him physically and he needs, needs to take care of his body as well, that it's a physical condition. It'll be a help to your dad. And she said, I never thought about that. You know, that's the case. And so, but it is a physical condition, even though it, this, the source is your heart, your emotions. It's a physical condition to be to dealt with. All right, this is true. And you, you've possibly seen, grief can be suppressed temporarily. It's possible to do that. <clears throat> you, you, it's possible to have the grief, but you suppress the expression. I've known of people that suppress their grief, and it, show, and it showed up a year later, or years later. The next time they had another major emotional loss, suddenly that undealt with grief surfaced with it. That has happened many times. Um, and in fact, I had recently had connection with a, uh, a gentleman in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, those who may be from Canada watching this, who his, his, part of his job is <clears throat> going out in, on behalf of a shelter to pick up people on the streets that are struggling and bring them back to the shelter. His conclusion after doing this for years and talking to a lot of the people on the streets that are homeless was, he says, I think over half of them got there because of undealt with grief. They've lost something and they've not been able to deal with it. And it, their, their life went spiral down, downward to where if we could do a better job of helping them deal with their grief, perhaps we could get them off the streets. All right, another thing about grief is that it's, there's a lot of variables. It's gonna, and we're going to be giving, in future classes, we'll be giving a list of some of the variables that, that dictate grief and how people process grief and even define uh, the grief that they're going to experience. Again, grief has no quick fix. If you think you can walk, to somebody up, walk up to somebody and, and comfort them in a funeral assembly line and, uh, and say something to them that's going to fix their grief, it's not going to happen. There is no quick fix because, again, it's a process.